person. All right. How about this? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, United Methodist Church. So if you would please sign the attendance book in the pews, even if you're a guest here, um, allow us to keep track of who showed up to worship this morning. And also, if you're comfortable, please include your email address uh, if you'd like to receive email communications from the church. Um, kids, or kids coin offering this month goes to Pheasant Heaven Charities. Um, and then after the offering, uh, they can meet their teacher back here at the door for Children's Church. There will not be a nursery available today. So offering plates are at the doors. Uh, feel free to leave your offering there. Um, and also, if you'd like, you can download the Tithely app online. Search for Huget United Methodist Church and uh, do your offering in that manner. There are Christmas cards in the conference room back there for the members of the church that are unable to attend services right now or are ill, so uh, please feel free to stop in and sign those, and they will be mailed on December 17th. The pecans have arrived, and they're in the kitchen back there, their kitchenette, and they are $12 a bag. Today we've got the kids Praise Kids program at 5 o'clock, and there is a soup and sandwich meal to follow. And then the kids need to be here at the church and dressed and ready to go by 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Wednesday will be the last meeting for youth until January 5th. 
Uh, this next Wednesday, we'll have Praise Kids from 345 to 515, Junior UMYF at 6, and Senior UMYF at 7. Um, December 19th next week is Communion Sunday. And then just kind of a, a notice coming up here, December 24th, the church office is going to be closed, and we will have the uh, Christmas Eve service here at the church at 5 p.m. on the 24th. So are there any other announcements? Okay, with that, if you're able, would you please stand for the call to worship? A path to our God. Winding through the ordinary. Weaving, weaving through the busyness. Overcoming roadblocks and detours. A way to go home. Leading the past in the past. Advent is a path to our God. A way to come home. A discovery of God's voice. Rejoice, rejoice, God is with us. Um, please remain standing in our opening hymn as though come all ye faithful, and we will sing the first three verses. It is a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been. It's like, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab a hold of those who are home for us and who make home for us. Whether we wake up to those every day or travel many miles to see them again, it is joy to go home. The prophet Je Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then to live like that was our truth even now, even here. It is a joy to go home. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve, and how we give and care for others. 
and how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in the world and the next and the next. We light these candles, the candle of hope. And of joy as a sign that we are on our way home. And we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination. And it is pure joy. It is time to go home. As the kids are coming up, why don't you stand up and greet one another? What's your program about? Today. It's today. Shepherd in Bethlehem Gulch. Yeah. Oh, Bethlehem Gulch. I hadn't heard of that. Cool. All right. We keep asking the girls, you know, what are they? Are they angels? Are they sheep? And we're not really getting an answer, <laughs> are we? No. We're just ready. And that's what they are wanting us to do. They want us to be ready. So, what's that say? The road to Bethlehem. The, the road to Bethlehem is what we're going to be singing this morning. We're going to have a cantata, and it's going to tell a story. You're going to have a program this evening, and it's going to tell a story. But, do you know who these people are? What's his name? Yeah, that's Linus. And Snoopy's a shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, so see, anybody can be a shepherd, right? Okay. So, what does this say? Do we have some people that can read? Shepherds abiding in the field, 
keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were short, they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good things of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Very good job. So Christmas is about glory, praise, adoration, and joy. And that's what you guys are going to share this afternoon. And hopefully that's what we're going to share this morning. Okay, let's bow our heads. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for joining the shepherds and the angels in glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the buckets are behind you. for preparation this morning is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
go to prayer today, I invite you to open your bulletin to our uh, list of prayer concerns on the inside flap. And I'd like to offer a couple things up this morning. Um, I spoke to Carol Sweeney this week, and she is doing fabulous. Um, she was not doing fabulous when she moved to Colorado, but at, the, at this time they're planning on moving her into assisted living, which would be a much lower level of care and give her a lot more independence. And she seems to be in very good spirits. So um, thank you for your prayers for her and her family, and, uh, and continue to do so. Carol is our beloved sister in Christ. Uh, I'd also like to offer up um, the family of our secretary in Satana. I don't know if any of us is acquainted with the Wood family, but both, both her mother-in-law and brother-in-law are in the hospital with COVID, and we're not expecting her mother-in-law to make it. Um, so we are uh, uh, grieving with them and, and praying for them through this difficult time. <coughs> are there other prayers, uh, other praises we'd like to lift up this morning? Thank you, Debbie. She, she uh, told us Joyce Leonard is in the hospital. Are there others? Jeff Hill's family. Mm -hmm. He passed away last week. Thank you, Bob. Are there others? Scripture tells us that the uh, prayers of the righteous accomplish much. I encourage you to uh, be in prayer for our friends and our family in these times of trial, as well as praise, because God is good even in times of trial. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together today, and Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we want to praise you. We want to worship you. Lord, we are in your house. We are in your presence. We are in communion with your body on earth, this family that you made for us, and Lord, we are so grateful. It is a good thing you've done for us. Thank you for your wisdom and your love in creating a family and a place for us. Lord, today as we come together, we bring all the concerns of our heart. Lord, we bring all the joys in our heart. And Lord, we lay them all down. Lord, they're yours. Lord, we trust you with them. We're grateful for all that you've done in our life. And we're grateful that we can trust you with those things that are beyond our power, beyond our wisdom, beyond our understanding. Lord, we know that you are good and wise, and that you love us. We thank you for that. Lord, today, as we've gathered in your house and in your family, we ask that, that you would be with us, that we would know your presence, which is the, the desire of our lives, to be in, in, in true and complete communion with you in this wonderful relationship. God, we ask for your presence. God, we ask that, that you would find our worship today, our celebration of you and your work today, that it would be sincere, that it would be pleasing to you. Lord, and we ask that as we go through this time of worship and celebration, that you would bind us more closely to you. Bind us more closely to the love that you have given us and the love that you have promised us in this day and in eternity. God, may this worship be pleasing to you. Lord, we ask these things in your name. As we say the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Katie Jimenez, and we are excited today to be performing our Christmas cantata that a bunch of us have been working on since 
the like middle of October. It is called The Road to Bethlehem, A Journey to the Newborn King by Lloyd Larson. And before I get started, I just want to tell you everyone that is involved, I took their name down because they have put in a lot of work and they deserve to be recognized. So once I'm done saying all their names, let's just give them an encouraging round of applause because this is going to be awesome. All right, the men in the group, I have Tyler Parkridge, Adrian Howie, Milton Gillespie, Eric Nordling, and Chris Philippi. And the ladies in the group, I have Kristen Howie, Stephanie Heger, Stacy Strickland, Carrie Clark, Janine Belts, Lori Crawford, Madison Crawford, Emily Rojas, Bonnie Lomax, Jean Lamash, Robin Sullivan, Sandra Passmore, and Angela Heger. And then of course, we could not make any of this possible without our amazing pian pianist. Her name is Eileen Gillespie, and we are very fortunate to have her, and she does a wonderful job. Um, and then we also have two readers this morning. One of them is my mom, Sue Omo, and then the other one is Dale Belt, right behind me. We hope you enjoy The Road to Bethlehem, and here we go. <laughs>
the road we expected. Of all the places in all the world, no one expected to be on the road to Bethlehem. Nothing good came from there. Why would anyone go? But many would. Something had changed. Something was calling them, drawing them, inviting them to it. Because suddenly, the road that led to Bethlehem was the road that led to God. travel all that way? Who in the dark of the night or loneliness of grief hasn't hoped for a light that is lasting? Who in moments of transcendent joy or fleeting beauty hasn't longed for the creator and source of it? Who when the world is so broken and unfair hasn't desired a judge who brings mercy and justice in balance? All, all hope all long, all desired this Messiah. It was this hope that kept each one walking toward him all the way to Bethlehem.
Joseph began on their road to Bethlehem quietly with gentle angels, dreams, and songs. The vision was beautiful, but the road was long. How easy it would have been for God to deliver this small family on angels' wings or clouds. And yet, here they were on a dusty road, step after step, faithfully plodding. Perhaps as she went, Mary sang the song she had composed for this child. God has lifted up the humble. He has filled the faithful with good things. Maybe she sang this even as the donkey carried her through the dust. Perhaps as he went, Joseph listened to this song from his wife and leaned just a bit closer to her and to the donkey, to the unborn child. Maybe he wondered at her words as his stomach rumbled. Could such hope be true, be here? He set his heart on finding out when they reached Bethlehem. shepherds did not start on a road at all. They stood on sheep paths in the soft grass that night. They listened to the familiar, small sleeping noises of their flock. They gazed up with tired eyes at the familiar stars. And then suddenly, something new appeared in the sky. Then they were wide awake. An angel, a promise, today in Bethlehem, a Christ has been a child has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Angel choruses appeared, singing glory. And then 
the sky was dark and familiar again, but nothing was the same. They gathered together to discuss what they had seen, but the discussion didn't last long. If it were true God had come to them, what could they do now but to go to him? They left their sheep, they found the path, and they started their walk to Bethlehem. <laughs> the shepherds ever heard came in lights, proclamations, and songs from angels in the sky. This is what started them down the road. But it was not just the journey that changed them. It was the person at the end of it. As they walked toward this promised king, they may have discussed what it would take to get a chance to see him. Would they be permitted? They knew they weren't a well-respected group. Would they be turned away? What a surprise to find what they found, a scene they could easily enter and knew much about. There was no guard at the door, just a few sheep, which made them laugh. And oh, this is not a normal king. This is a king for us. In the quiet, in the stillness, there among the hay, they held and beheld him, Jesus. This endless God made himself small enough to hold. How could it be? And yet, here it was, here in Bethlehem. <laughs>
The Magi came later with no sweet songs on their lips or promises to follow. King Herod sent them to find this promised Messiah. Herod said he wanted to worship him. But even as he spoke, the Magi sensed the lie in his words. How could a person start on a road marked with suspicion, deception, and destruction and end anywhere else? Herod sent them on that dark path, but it was a star in the sky that lit their way. It was a star in the sky that replaced their suspicion with joy. It was a star in the sky that illuminated Jesus' small face, God's great love. They gave their gifts freely. They knelt at his small feet. They heard the voice of God in his small words. They felt the love of God in his small presence. Having seen and heard, they left Bethlehem. But Bethlehem never left their hearts. Every path leads to God. When it is God, you are following. might not know what road you are on today, or you might not be sure where it leads. It could be you are on a road you did not choose, or at least would not again. Nothing about where you are is an accident. You are here today, and whether through words, songs, light, or some quiet hope, Bethlehem calls to you. A child has been born there. Jesus, Emmanuel. And even as you make your way to him, 
Jesus has come to you. day and for the many wonderful blessings you've given us. Be with us and our families this Christmas season and help us all to remember the true, the true reason for Christmas. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen.